Yeah, hello everyone. How was your day zero so far? I hope everything was well. I am Mario. I am a customer delivery architect at Qmatic, and I don't know nothing about AI. Um, the reason why I don't know nothing about AI because I don't have to, but we want to basically, yeah, run AI workloads somewhere and utilize them. So uh, I work for Kubernetes. We build a multi-cluster, multi-cloud um, Kubernetes management platform. I also am part of uh, SIG Contrabex Comps for the Kubernetes project and SIG Kates Infra for the Kubernetes project. And I'm also acting as an ambassador for ARM and I work as a GDE for Google. And I'm from Bavaria in Germany. Usually I have my lederhosen, but honestly it was too cold in Paris, so no lederhosen this time. Um, when we talk about AI and AI workloads, it's always hard to, where do I run this, right? So where do I actually run my models? Where do I train my models? Where do, do I use my... Uh, my requirements, where, where do I have a platform to run this? So Kubernetes is an option to run AI and to train AI models, but it's not a requirement. However, it's a pretty well fit. Why is Kubernetes a pretty well fit? We have, who of you is using Kubernetes in production? That's good. So what are the benefits of Kubernetes? It has self-healing aspects, it's scalable, you can run it everywhere. You can literally run it everywhere. I can run it potentially on my phone now, which is quite nice, but probably most of the people won't do this. So we have a multitude of options and I bet all of you have problems running Kubernetes clusters or is everyone running Kubernetes smoothly without any issues and everything is fine all the time. If yes, please show your hand. Oh, one. That's nice. One person has uh, no problems. So running AI workloads in Kubernetes has the benefit that we have the scalability. We can stretch it out. We can basically distribute everything. But we can also utilize AI to yeah, slim our, our process and or to, to fix clusters. And for this, there's an open source tool and it's a cloud native sandbox project since last year, which is called KDS GPT. Who has used KDS GPT? That's not so many people. So KDS GPT is, as I said, an open source project and uh, it's help you triaging Kubernetes issues with the help of AI. You can implement it with 10 different interfaces. It's, you can use ChatGPT, you, you can use uh, Gemini, you can use Vertex AI, you can use uh, AWS, you can use all of the different vendors. Um, it also has an in-cluster operator for consistent monitoring. So you can basically run it in your shell or you just run it in every cluster and get logs of it sent to all of the, all of the different environments. The problem is, I'm from Germany. We don't trust providers. We don't trust anyone. We don't trust our own mother, probably. So the problem is we don't want our things that run in our cluster being sent to a public cloud provider or being sent to open, uh, open AI or we, we, we just don't want our data to go out. So we create a magic triangle inside of our environment, which means that we basically take what we want and run it inside of our own clusters. This means we utilize three different things there. We utilize our own knowledge that we have about Kubernetes because everyone has a, has a Slack chat with, hey, how do I debug this? How do I debug this issue? Um, and there's also the, the potential that we can use like, hey, let's scrape Kubernetes questions from Stack Overflow and see what are the, yeah, what are, what are the, common, the common questions that we have. And then we use local AI, which is also an open source project. And I, I think you're now following me where I want to go with there. So you don't have 
we don't have to pay for the yeah for paid services for AI because we can basically do this on our own in our own environment and own it and that's the the most important part and we can utilize a tool called Q Kubeflow who has used Kubeflow before one person two uh, quite some persons so we can utilize Kubeflow as an environment where we want to run this so Kubeflow is an ML, ML toolkit it is there for data preparation, you can do train your models, you can fine tune your models, you can uh, have a serving where you can run your model and you can also have a service, uh, you have also the service management option um, to run this stuff. The problem with this is we will only use a really, really small part of it because we will mostly only use for this setup Kubeflow pipelines. Why you would ask? KDS GPT doesn't support K surf momentarily to basically surf this. The good thing is Kubeflow can basically run everywhere. So you can run it on your laptop, you can run it in your home lab, you can run it in the public cloud, you can, there are um, providers to run it in the, uh, on the big public cloud providers and uh, it's a tool set that you can just install out of the box. What is local AI? Local AI is also an open source project that basically do provide you with a REST API for that is compatible with open API specifications. So we can use local AI to run our LLM models inside of our clusters because local AI also has a Helm chart so we can use it in our clusters, we can deploy it via a Helm chart then we have the benefits of running it inside of Kubernetes, so load distribution, run multiple models at once. Uh, we can use it to generate, uh, to generate images, we can use it to generate audio, and the best thing is it doesn't require a GPU. So we don't have to have a GPU to run our models inside of our cluster, so we can utilize our normal clusters there. How does this look in the end? Um, when I said we are taking our own fine-tuned model and put it into our own clusters to basically feed into KDS GPT. When we, so what we still need to do, and this is the hard part, and because this is only a lightning talk, we can't get into too much detail there. We first need to prepare a data set. So you still go the, the normal workflow of what would you do to fine tune your own model? And alone this part is hilariously hard. So this takes time. And this is something that you always need to remember when you look at this whole setup that every step of this, although it's running in your own infrastructure, this takes time, this takes working time, this takes compute time, this takes money from your company to run this. So even though it is yours, think twice if you want to have the whole stack in your own or if you just want to use other services for this. But if you want to be secure and if you have requirements and there are certain fields in the industry that have requirements like we cannot have any of our data get outside of our environment, then you need to go to the painful process and basically do everything yourself. Then what we do is we use PyTorch um, and let write with PyTorch a fine-tuning script. So we take an existing LLM, and I mean, there are plenty, uh, plenty of LLMs out there. Um, the good thing is uh, it, local AI supports a multitude of, L, uh, of LLMs that you can use and utilize. And there's also Gemma that Basically, you, so you can use Gemma from Google, you can use Open Llama from, from Meta and so on and so on. And then we have basically our PyTorch job that takes the fine tuning process. Uh, so you put everything into a Docker container, load the data set with the script, and then you basically run it inside of a pipeline of Kubeflow and then put it out as a GTUF file and then you give it to local AI, and then the, the easiest thing is, this is just a connector. So this is just a connector that asks like, hey, KDS GPT, please take as an endpoint, 
for you, the questions that you run inside of your cluster, please just take uh, local AI and all of the questions go there. And then you can say like, uh, KDS GPT, analyze, explain. And it will analyze your whole cluster with your own local running um, model. But as I said, this is the beginning. This means this is not the, the end where we are. There is a lot of hassle. The main problem that we currently have is Kubeflow is horrible to set up. And I mean really horrible. We are waiting for a solution that is like, hey, I want to have like a Helm chart and it runs in my cluster and everything is fine. This is not the case. There are some vendors that basically package Kubeflow. Uh, I know that Canonical have like an easy out-of-the-box solution. The big cloud providers have an out-of-the-box solution. But if you run it on-prem on your own data set, uh, it's not fun. <laughs> Um, you need, still need to write the PyTorch fine-tuning scripts. There's no plug-and-play. Um, and also, data preparation takes time. Um, so this is all the things that still hold us back. You need to constantly fine-tune. The good thing is, everything is so fast. So basically, what I showed you today won't be... I don't know. <laughs> it's, a, it's the same last slide. Um, so everything that I showed you today is probably completely obsolete in half a year. So when we meet in Salt Lake City, you say like, why did you talk about this? It's way easier now. Um, but I think tuning, no matter where you run it, tuning your set with your own data is the next logical step to utilize AI because f models are fine. But what we want is we want our own fine-tuned models with our data because there we have the knowledge that we can multiply. Thank you very much.